Let's bring in ABC News medical contributor and emergency physician Darian Sutton for more on this. Uh, Dr. Sutton, if this smaller dose is just as safe and effective, why not start this sooner? You know, it's really difficult. It comes down to trying to figure out how to roll this vaccine out and implement these changes while also coordinating with providers who are providing these vaccines to patients. Uh, we've seen in prior studies that using this method of this intradermal uh, mechanism of inoculating patients with this vaccine has been effective in similar things such as rabies and flu and hepatitis when we've studied them in terms of the immunogenicity or antibody or immune response. And we've seen in prior studies that there are similar antibody responses between those who have received the regular form of injection and this different form, this intradermal form of injection. But my concern is on effectiveness. We have seen that it is protective against severe disease, but my question is, does it protect against mild disease and therefore transmission? I'm hopeful that we'll get more results to this soon. And how long does it take to decide on that big of a question? You know, I think it probably will take probably weeks to figure out exactly or expand on the data that we already know. We have seen that in these smaller studies, albeit there's approximately 150 to 200 patients in these studies, that the response is similar between the different types of injections. But again, I think when we roll that out to broad populations, it really will be time to tell. But hopefully we'll get it within this month or the next month to understand the exact level of effectiveness. And with that being said, I still advise my patients, whether or not they're vaccinated, to continue to practice this caution and protecting ourselves against monkeypox. Now, health officials say this new way to give the injection gives them enough vaccine supplies to start vaccinating at-risk children, but the kids will get the regular shot, the normal dose. Why? I think this comes down to just trying to vaccinate a child. Uh, many of us have been in the room when we try to uh, come near a child with anything in a clinical setting, and it can be quite difficult. Uh, this method, this intradermal, requires the patient to be very still so that you can get the vaccine in the appropriate place. And if you can imagine, I know you understand, trying to get a child to do anything can be quite difficult. As a mother of two little ones, I know getting them to stand still for those shots is, in fact, quite difficult. Um, now, the CDC says that they're they're going to provide information and educational materials to train healthcare workers to administer the vaccine this way. If this isn't a common practice and medical professionals need sort of some extra training to be able to do that, do you think it'll delay the application process? I think it will delay, but very short times. I think those who are providing vaccinations, providers, nurses, technicians, are all skilled and able to provide intradermal injections, but it really just takes a moment to remind everyone about the correct way to do it. Again, it's something that we commonly do uh, with other forms of injections, for example, as was stated, with allergy testing. And also many people can re remember their, their tuberculosis testing or something that we call PPD shots. That requires an intradermal injection. Many people know that well from experiencing clearance through college and other academic and professional um, abilities that they have to do. So I don't think it will take a long time, but I think it will take a moment to recalibrate everyone, say this is what we're doing, and to make sure everyone's on the same page. And so uh, Dr. Sutton, it's still not going to be one of those things where everybody gets the monkeypox vaccine. So just review for us, what can we do to protect yeah. ourselves right now? Some basic things that people are asking, how do I as a physician protect myself around patients who are infected with monkeypox? The first and most important thing to do is to simply wash our hands in between experiencing new things. When you're meeting a new person, touching new services, always remember to wash your hands. And I know there's a lot of fear around about how to get the virus. And remember, the virus gets into our bodies through mucous membranes, for example, touching our face or our eyes or through broken skin. So if you're around others and you have any concerns, the best way to protect yourself is simply wash surfaces that are high touch, uh, use in public settings, washing your hands, avoiding touching your face. And then, of course, if you know someone is near you with active monkeypox, avoid sharing the same objects in terms of utensils, blankets, and towels. But, Diane, it really simply comes down to simply washing our hands. That's really the most important thing. You got it. Dr. Darian Sutton, we appreciate it as always. Thank you. Thank you. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.